we need to go back to our roots as africans we need to go back to our roots and by our roots i mean not paying for stuff that we're not supposed to be paying for there's no reason whatsoever we should be paying for food when you can grow it on soil in our land our ancestral lands there's no single reason why we should be paying for water because literally just get a tank and put it in the rain and collect the bloody water yourself there's no single reason why we should be paying for to go to school because if you have a skill just teach your children we need to go back to our roots and it sounds crazy when i say it right now but capitalism is crumbling and they're going to try and take us with them hi guys welcome back to our channel in case you're new here my name is maren and i'm maureen right so in today's episode we've featured a sister who came out to give advice to the black community and africans and she was just basically talking about how we used to live our lives in the traditional days before the palm colored person came in and decided to change the system and brought white supremacy and decided to shame the black people into believing yeah. they were living in a barbaric way right she Kind of just, she kind of just reminds us of how we used to sustain ourselves and we found that um, some of the points she spoke of it was very important and hence the world needed to hear it black people needed to hear it and i feel like you still do for you to remember who you are and to not forget never forget who you used to be because when you forget the palm colored person makes you forget your history and then they turn back around and claim your history monetize for it monetize ties it and also uh, when they call your history barbaric they call it stylish and whatnot when they do it right so guys let's watch the video first and then we come back with our commentaries let us know what you think about this episode in the comment section also consider if you, uh, subscribing if it's your first time here let's watch first if you don't already know they have all our seeds all african seeds are stored because they foresee a time where everything is going to crumble and it's coming very very soon and literally someone said here on this app that our future as africans is in the past is in how we used to do things in the past that is our future which means we all have to go back to understanding who we are how we farmed how we lived who we worship not worship who we connected to because the word worship is very colonized there's no such thing as worship in the african culture we connected for example in my community if a child is born we slaughter um an animal either a cow usually a smaller animal like a sheep and the blood is poured on the ground to connect to our ancestors it was not for a form of worship it was connecting the child the newborn child to the ancestors that was the significance of it we connected to earth we literally remember how <laughs> ha! yo remember how there was a time when not wearing shoes was a uh, barbaric pover, po a sign of poverty it was because you're not uh, learned uh, you know our parents used to give us those stories of struggle where they didn't have shoes and in real sense now it's grounding it's you know it's cool when they do it it's barbaric when we do it just saw a video of um italians building the exact same houses our ancestors have been building for years but now it's a fairy tale and it's cool and it's preserving nature because it's always cool when they do it but barbaric when we do it you know camping Camping is literally how Africans used to live on a day-to-day -day basis. Once you're done with farming, you just chill. Now, suddenly, oh, the sun is very important for you. It's sudden, the sun is really good for you. But when we do it, we are lazy. We are sun, sun. I remember there's a time in high school when we were not allowed to sunbathe because it was lazy. Go and read. Go and be constructive. The thing that is most essential to me as a black woman with this skin, being out in the sun was demo was was lazy now our arts and craft that was apparently we worshipped because like i said the word worship is very colonized it's very whitewashed there's no such thing as worship when it comes to african culture that is something that was put in us to make us feel i don't know like we are inferior to them 
how you're worshiping the wind what are you a psycho do you know that we, we instead of literally i'm just breathing in air because the wind has all the air that i need and then someone is gonna be like oh no that's been you need to worship a god you don't see because apparently now that's superior you know something you can't even there's no evidence they've never been able to show us proof that this god exists but somehow when we worship when we connect to see i'm also trying to unlearn it when we are connecting to elements that actually exist we are the dumb ones and there's a lot of void washing and that's why i keep saying and i'm going to keep saying let's go back to our past and the best way of doing that is learning about our past without the whitewashing realizing what's true what's the lie which one was whitewashed which one was put negatively another thing that i have realized and i need people to come to terms with is we used to be very close with animals what they call wild animals once upon a time we did in fact relate to and we lived in harmony with animals and i need people to understand that and there's a reason why they they used to say oh africans do you guys have like pet horse pet elephants and pet leopards and it was put in such a negative connotation to make you feel like that's a stupid thing but when you really think about it imagine having a lion as a pet that's some cool as f- it and that's the thing we did have lions these stories are not something they imagined and there's a reason there's such a negative connotation towards having a pet lion and a pet cheetah and a pet elephant and a pet giraffe. It's because we literally had them, not as pets, but as companions on this earth, on this Africa. In this, in this continent, we did in fact have animals. And I recently saw that and I recently understood that it reached a point in time when a child was growing up. They will, be, they will go out and find an animal and they will connect on a soul to soul hence the word spirit animal literally spirit animal is the animal that you connected to on a spiritual level that's all, that was a thing we did and people and we were so brainwashed such that we, you had to 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 like defend yourself oh no we are very developed we're very developed we don't have pet animals we don't have pet wildlife as if it's such a bad thing to have imagine having a lion in your room and it's completely under and you guys connect and it, it protects you you guys go out there and feed together you hunt together god damn that's some cool as shit. why did we ever what who made us feel like it was wrong to do that because i generally i want i want a pet lion and a snake and a elephant i want all of them because why not we need to go back to our roots man hey there's so much to discover yeah guys welcome back let us know what you think about this episode on the comment section Mm -hmm. and you know how how i felt so warm and so good when this lady when we were hearing her speak yeah because we we grew also us we grew up in a time where it uh, we found that people here in africa i'll just speak for kenya okay neighbors used to share things if you feel like uh you don't have salt you just go to the next door neighbor and ask them for some for something right right and unlike nowadays growing up actually especially the two of us Mm -hmm. a lot of the food we used to consume was very uh, organic very organic and it was homegrown Mm, straight from the garden straight from the garden very fresh Uh, right nowadays right and when this sister said we shouldn't be paying for anything that let that sink in you should be living but you should never pay for anything because when god made earth he made it sustainable for the human life right right so you're asking yourself how did we find ourselves in such a position where you feel I have like to butter everything with money exactly. like for example if I have maize and I don't have vegetables mm-hmm. I have to remove something that is a currency mm. that is a common currency in order to go and obtain that vegetables mm-hmm. while us growing up if I had vegetables and this one had unga all I had to do was that literally walk up to her house mm. and ask her you know what I haven't have my maize or the ones that i harvested 
it has finished can you mm. please help me with flour mm. and and yes. the life, life back then was very sustainable because people weren't living in fancy houses man discovered how to build homes but you look at uh, not not that i'm saying guys not that, that I'm nowadays that it's good on trees or it's what good, yes but why can't you find a system where why do we have to monetize everything why can't we find a system where because we have enough trees when you cut down timber to build a house mm. you can plant um you can plant uh, what is it called a tree replace the one that you've cut down so i feel like in a way she makes sense we could have found a way to live sustain to, to to sustain ourselves from what we have from the planet without having to include money she mentioned something about uh, africans buying things they don't need you tell me how we got to this where we put on clothes yet we had our own systems and these ones are things you have to buy but our ancestors how they were living they oh. used to make their own clothes mm -hmm. and then you know also something that she said that is i think the biggest takeaway for me mm. for africans our future is in our past right our future is in our past and what she meant by this is mm. you know right now my sister and i we've grown in a uh, in a situation where we don't know how to farm True. But had we grown two generations behind uh, us, mm -hmm. we'd have grown up knowing how to farm. Mm -hmm. Our future is in our past. Mm -hmm. And I feel like right now the society of African has been curtailed in such a way they're purposefully making it impossible for the um, next generation. generation for p those traditions to be passed down to the next mm. generations because mm. uh, uh, even uh, as we speak here in kenya mm. agricultural uh, laws are being passed that uh, it's very it's not good good it's for the african people the kenyan people right yeah and also they're making it illegal mm. for anybody to farm even this garden to table kind of farming mm -hmm. they make it neat illegal for people to farm if you have not attended a college university what are they going to, to teach be teaching in those there that our forefathers didn't teach our parents and for you to learn you have to pay them. money for that right and, and then you have to even go with the mindset that <clears throat> with bill bill gates you know he's messed with them he's everything. messed with so what are you what going, are you going to, to teach to be taught there you know get knowledge yo man <laughs> yeah. another thing also she uh when she was talking i was remembering a video i saw on tiktok a while back mm. you know how there was a point in time where mm -hmm. there was this trend where nigerians were going abroad they were having biracial babies now that became a trend you know what i'm saying mm. so you found that a lot of babies who are light had these african names right you know there could even be white passing exactly so you see someone being called charles james or kochuku or, or just both nigerian names yeah. yeah it came something just nigerian names you and know. that person is totally white. white and then you see a, a black, black person in, in baby uh, not even black passing baby a well, black, black person in africa because they are taught to self-hate and not to like their culture and everything so they abandon it it even relates to the names they give Give their babies guys if i tell you somebody is calling is busy calling the, their kids alejandro in in, in africa alejandro <laughs> somebody is calling them somebody is calling their ch um, child james taylor james and taylor like, james taylor and you're james? like where's the african name just taylor james just taylor james and then another thing she said you know uh she said in africa a long time ago we used to walk barefoot and you know that was our way of Damn, connecting to right. the earth like really connecting to the earth mm. right now by wearing shoes you're, you're not gonna having be... that contact with earth yeah. so you're not reading the earth the way it is right and you're, you're gonna be if you're found walking barefoot right now you're considered poor not very poor. poor poor people wear shoes, shoes. you are considered bottom be... of the barrel whatever is exactly. below beyond poor that you is are what that. you are yeah and you'll just make fun of you and laugh at you right but you're asking yourself this used to be an african tradition right, right now it's being done in australia people mm. are walking barefoot. barefoot and for them now because they're doing it it's considered fashion, fashion or you know. cool yeah i so also saw just... in america people who go barefoot so that they can reconnect back with the earth mm. the palm colored people mm. Mm. and then you ask yourself there was a point in time where I, I, I understand that uh, having an African name in America 
was the worst thing that could happen to you. You know, before you even talked for people to know you're from Africa, just, just your name, name alone, alone was like, you would get bullied for that. So guys, you can tell us better in the comment section. Mm -hmm. But right now, like, you see how Africans are giving up their names. Mm. White people are taking up those names. Somebody, you find a palm-colored lady who's married to a Nigerian man. You're very happy to... Oh, know. and she wears that name, name like with pride. pride. And let's talk about our clothes, the African um, attire. fashion attire. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of videos, a lot of pictures where... Especially in weddings. Right. Where palm-colored people who are getting married to Africans in the continent, they adopt that culture and they're very proud to wear the clothes, you know. Mm -hmm. And some of them, this big fashion house, uh, who, you know, who take designs from this, uh, I've seen from the Maasai community. I don't know which brand it was, but it was one of these big brands that they hold uh, fashion shows for. And they then they that, go, they, they, just what the colonizers usually yeah, do. Yeah, they, they don't go even change anything. Anything or credit to where it's coming, coming from. from. They just say they've discovered new fashion, right. new Patterns and they're selling it at an, a very high price, you mm. know. So guys, let us know what you think about this episode. What do you have to say about what this sister is saying? Because I yeah. feel like mm. uh, it, it didn't just take somebody, uh, some colonizer somewhere for this to happen, but I feel like we all participated into making uh, the society what it is right now. now. Each and every one of us, because mm. the biggest thing she said was, mm. when we leave our culture and abandon it, mm. they take it up and, and adopt it. And they adopt it not just that they also monetize on it yeah it's because what i'm asking myself like mm -hmm. uh 5 10 50 years down the line they'll be having all our culture and the way you know the way they say the black culture is usually vibrant and the white culture is somehow yeah, just there let's wait and you see know, because anyway. she, she mentioned something about africans being able to sustain themselves in terms of uh, natural resources Farming, like water, getting water, water to drink and cook. So you know, back in the day, African people did not have this system of uh, bottled water, and I don't know what this that and that. Mm -hmm. Black people knew how to collect rainwater, and they knew how to preserve it in order for it to be clean and uh, to be uh, to be taken. Right? <laughs> they need, when the palm colored person came, they came with water treatment stuff. This that uh, and that. Then you, get, you guys. Bear in mind, Africans already knew how to preserve water and how to clean water, but they came with their they big machines their and all. Man. Yeah, let's just say in this case, they both had their own technology, but because the palm colored person saw himself superior back in the day, mm -hmm. they said theirs was the better whatever, and they started shaming Africans into collecting rainwater. Mm -hmm. Right. So guys, as you prepare yourself to go for camping, remember that it first started in Africa. It was an actual way of living for our ancestors. And remember also when uh, they build those huts and credit it to Italy and say that Italy is preserving some a good history well known to Italians. You people, you know that palm colored people used to live in structures that looked like horse barns. Barns, barns. Yeah. I don't know, but you guys know what I mean. Barns or barns. They used barns. to build their house, like in Vikings. That is the image we are being told. Mm. Yeah, how they used to build their houses, and then right now they're taking the African heart shaped, heart -shaped uh, design. design and calling it their own culture. But guys, let us know what you think about this episode. Right. Let's catch you on our next. We, as usual, we thank you so much for joining us. And remember don't to forget subscribe. to subscribe before you leave.